Well, hello guys, welcome back. So I ended up doing the work with St. Michael. He never wants very much, but he doesn't ask twice. Just so you know, if you're going to work with Michael, um, you know, there's, if you grew up Catholic and you worked with that version of Michael, as opposed to say hoodoo way of seeing him or the new age way of seeing him, the Michael of the Catholic Church will kick your ass for you. There's no polite way to say that. He will give you command and he's giving you your orders because he's a military leader and he doesn't ask twice. He tells his soldiers something once and if you don't understand, it's fine to ask for additional directions, but he's not going to tell you twice. And he's pretty good at telling you exactly what he wants and giving you clear-cut orders to follow. He's not going to try to confuse you but you you do exactly what he wants and you do it now. And luckily Gabriel was willing to come on board and I thought a few others. And it was like that was the only thing tempering it because Michael can get over enthusiastic and it's a known thing that if you work with Michael and you're working with flames, please do be careful. He is very passionate. He's very fiery. He's known to sometimes cause damage. Just, you know, you working with the cam or candle or incense or something. So you do have to have a care when you work with Michael because he's very fiery and he's very passionate. He's very strong. And once he activates on something, he's not going to stop until he feels like stopping. Nobody's going to stop him. And whether you believe he's a free agent or you believe he answers to God, God's not going to step in. Nobody knows why, but nobody steps in. When Michael gets going, nobody steps in his way. That's what Ismodius was worried about. He's like, you know, he's not the safest angel in the world to work with. I'm like, I know, but he gave me an order and I worked with him before. And he's like my brother and he gave me the training. I said, um, I can't refuse an order from him. I said, if he wants me in the trenches, he wants me in the trenches. I said, Michael have the back of anybody he picks, but you have to follow the orders and you have to be willing to do what he tells you. And I had asked God this morning and the God I pray to, we we got it figured out is the god before the bible the there were a whole bunch of contenders to become the god of the bible in fact it could still be three or four different gods just so you know and the god i chose to work with because i was going to a catholic college and we had to pray to god was the pre-version of god before the bible the main one that got replaced was kind of a badass that if he were around today, and he is, would be riding around the desert on his Harley, getting into bar fights and chasing women. Um, this this was the god I chose to pray to, and it was like he was the one that showed up on the Harley, and he's like, hey, babe, how you doing? How about you work with Michael, huh? And then he's off. He he never spends much time. He's like, how about you work with Michael, huh? Yeah? You my girl? Okay. And he's off. And Odin was just looking at me like, that's the most sexist and repugnant thing I've ever seen. I'm like, mm. <laughs> yeah, I had to pick one, okay? And he's like, you basically picked me on a Harley. I'm both flattered and appalled. So <laughs> Od Odin's actually happy. He was like, you did the smart thing. Michael called on you and you didn't refuse him and you, you obeyed orders. And you're using all the resources you have at this time. He said, you're doing the smart thing. Ismodius was just worried because Michael can go off like an atomic bomb and destroy everything in the immediate vicinity. So he's he's actually very highly dangerous to work with. Um, the demons, sometimes it depends on how you work with them. If you work at, with them as old gods, people don't have usually as much problems. But you know, our gods can be tetchy. They can go off. If Loki goes off or Odin goes off, it can be spectacular. But Michael especially is known for going off and dispensing his own justice. And he can be incredibly harsh. I mean, like burning your house down harsh. Um, he, I love him and I respect him. And he's not evil and he's not bad, but he's a real son of a bitch. It's like the mafia just showed up and gave you an opportunity. Take that opportunity. Do your work. He's not evil, he's not bad, but you don't fuck around when you work with him either. It's like, he gave you an order, do it. Um, and Gabriel was like, oh, hi, Michael, wanted you to do something, yay? I don't think the other angels are scared of him, but it's just, he's he's absolute, you know, you you obey the order, you do this. And he still loves you, he loves you in Michael's own way, it's just, it's a very harsh you're our soldier 
That's the only flavor Michael seems to see humans in. He thinks we're all soldiers and we're all going to obey orders. And what's the problem? He just spoke to us in a tongue we can understand. And he told us exactly what to do. It's never very much. It's never very much what Michael asked for. He, you know, I got inspired and I did the candle work. And I did incense. And I had gotten inspired to do the Red Cross donation. And he's fine. He's, he's done with me. But it's this idea of, you know, he's not the New Age version that I work with. He's not the all love and light version. And the demons had just got uneasy because it was Michael in particular that showed up. They don't seem to have any respect, whatever, in my, my experience for Gabriel or any of the others. But <laughs> Michael shows up. Michael makes everyone e uneasy. If any go uh, any archangel could be called a god in his own right i think people would choose michael because he's just an unstoppable powerhouse when he works and you do have to know he's known as the angel of death if i didn't say this recording and he is known as an angel that brings plagues and i said offhandedly to him today because i know his temper i said i don't mean to upset you brother but if you are running around with your sword for whatever totally legitimate reason you have um could you please not you've made your point and he, he, he i just kind of got this idea he was looking at me and evaluating me and thinking about whether or not i needed smited or not <laughs> luckily he came down in my favor and i said i'm not accusing you i said it's just we have an awful lot of statues dedicated to you finally sheathing your sword um if you've seen those statues on a church especially in europe where michael is sheathing a sword He's not drawing it out in protection. He's sheaving it because he probably just killed a bunch of people in a plague, or at least, you know, there was a plague. People prayed to God, and the upshot was that Michael appeared sheaving a sword with blood on it. Whether Michael killed people, killed whatever was causing the plague, or something else, nobody knows, but they just know that Michael's sheaving a bloody sword and to thank him they put a statue up and it's like this is why catholics are a bit leery when it comes around like oh it's it's michael he's you know the angel of people in the military and front lines nurses doctors not for a reason so i just figured i'd catch you guys up we're we're i don't know if i told you we're under lockdown for at least until sometime in april wolf just told us governor just told us he's like bullshit on what anybody else tells you he extended it statewide, and you can still go out, get anything you need, like groceries, whatever. I, I've tried this a bunch of times, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. But, you know, you still go out and get the essentials. You can still go out and do frontline work. But I'm like, you know, this is kind of, it would be like Michael's orders. Like, you stay in place, you don't indulge yourself. If you need food, if you need medicine, if you need to do good work on the front lines, you do it, like delivering food or medicine to other people or, you know, delivering them, whatever. But you don't do anything frivolous right now. Michael usually doesn't have time for frivolous. I know I make him sound terrible. He can be very warm and loving, but he can also knock you on your ass, too. So just be aware. I I I was happy he showed up. Um, it's like the other archangels then, though, show up, not because you're special, but because they're like, oh, my God, you're alive? You are? You sure? You okay? Did Michael put a curse on you? Is he putting a plague on your house? You're okay? Okay. It, it's kind of like every time Michael works with somebody, the other archangels are like, are they alive? Are they? Huh. Don't know why they sell statues and cards of them. He's kind of nuts, but okay. You're alive? Good for you. And I, I had a um, discussion with one of you, whether he's on Team Yahweh or not. Nobody knows. Some people will say he answers to God. Some people will say he answers to no one. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a thing. A lot more people are thinking that, you know, the way the archangels behave, it's not like they're answering to any God. They're independent angels. And, um, again, with me, it wasn't like demons bad, angels good, demons like that for that reason. It's just Michael scares most people, especially most Catholics. When he shows up, we're like, oh shit, what did we do? We're so terribly sorry, don't hurt me. So, you know, he's not the angel of warm cuddles. He's not the angel that comes bearing baskets of peeps and kittens. That's not Michael's role. Michael's role is like, oh, <laughs> it's Michael, what's he doing here? He's gonna kill me he's decided i'm evil 
So, yeah, when Michael shows up, ex-Catholics especially are like, oh, fuck, God sent him to kill me. So, <laughs> luckily, he just wanted me to do the work, and he seems fine. He's like, he doesn't care if I go to church or not. He's just like, I need you to do this work, do it now, and fine. <laughs> so, the Michael Mafia was here. <laughs> Odin's happy. Uh, and Loki's happy. He's like, good, you did the right thing. But they were both giving me the choice of whether to do the work or not. Asmodeus was the one trying to get in the way. And, you know, it felt like the other demons had backed off. Asmodeus was actively trying to get in the way and stop me from doing it. And I said, you don't understand. Michael doesn't give options. <laughs> Michael gives orders. So, you know, I don't want to scare you. If you're feeling called to work with Michael or any of the other archangels, it'll be fine. Just understand Michael's like the old man and Michael's like Loki. It's it's an order. It's not an option. It's not, hey, could you please do this? I would be so super happy. It's like, okay, soldier, here's your orders. And if you don't carry them out in a timely fashion, <laughs> you will be sorry. So, you know, and... um. Other than that, we're doing pretty good. We're we're going to stay in for the duration. I plan to stay in, um, since especially so much stuff is shut down. Like you you can't go most places now. I'm going to stay in for at least I'm thinking till mid April, at least until mid April, if not end of April till May, till this stuff gets knocked out because you know my immune system's worth being. So you know I'll be in for a while. So. If you guys like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.